and welcome back to the Cover 3 Podcast here on CBS Sports. That's Tom Fernelli. That's Danny Cannell. That's Bud Elliott. I'm Chip Patterson coming to you live at YouTube.com slash Cover 3 and everywhere you get your podcasts on demand. Thanks for hanging out. Smash that subscribe. Smash that like and come and join us in the chat, a.k.a. the Cover 3 tailgate. Transfer portal open for business. Lots of Hoosiers, Aggies, Buffs all in the portal. Um, there were some pieces that are moving, some big storylines to get to. We will give you the names to know the teams that are involved in some of the biggest storylines from the first 24 hours and change from the transfer portal being open in just a little bit. Something that we're going to continue to monitor again across these two weeks. Transfer portal opened on Tuesday. will be open for two weeks, closing on April 30th. Uh, lots to get to as we sort of figure out, in- including, okay, so like, how many of these guys that are in the portal are going to be having a real impact on the season? Or is this a depth question? So we're we're going to get into all that. Uh, But first, we start with some of the news of yesterday, which I think it doesn't like knock me over. But for our fans and our listeners, there are some important clarifications. Because the headline, Michigan reaches settlement with NCAA. It's like, okay, so so is is this the end of it? No. Michigan reaches settlement with NCAA on case number one. This is the cheeseburger. This is not the sign stealing, okay? The recruiting violations, we haven't even gotten into the Connor Stallions situation. Uh, The punishments include three years probation, uh, a fine, recruiting restrictions, and a one-year show cause for former coaches involved with the violations. You dig into the case a little bit, you find that they've identified five former coaches you know, who, who are receiving uh, some of these punishments and are tied to this. One of them uh, who has not been named in the official documentation did not uh, participate. Um, uh, Danny Cannell, you got any hot guesses on which former Michigan coach maybe did not cooperate or participate with the agreements and the conclusions and the resolutions of this first uh, NCAA case for Michigan? I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe he was unreachable because he's in an RV by the beach out in Los Angeles. I mean, is that where Harbaugh's, is he doing this? Oh, thing? yeah. The Chargers oh. put out a phenomenal video. He's living in an RV at an RV park in Huntington Beach. Like it is oceanfront. And Greg Roman, his coordinator, is like right next to him in another one. And they did a little walkthrough. They're both their RVs. I mean, he's living his best life. You could just say like out of, you know, out of pocket, just like (laughs) I'm just. NCAA can't reach me. You know, like he skipped town. He's in an RV. Um, You know, so in terms of the, uh, the, the Michigan case altogether, um, Michigan, Tom, Michigan should feel like it's at least putting it this part of it behind it. Right. Well, first of all, Danny, that's all you can afford on his salary in, in Southern California is that, oh, is that RV. Exactly. Um, what, what was the question again? <laughs> Should, all right, is Michigan moving ahead? Just like, okay, fine. We're yeah. good. We're done. Like there's there's not a, too much extra concern that you're going to have to worry with um, from a, yeah. the first case here. Yeah, I, I think this about just wraps that up. Like I, I, I think Harbaugh leaving and a lot of the coaches who were involved in all that stuff not being there anymore. I mean, we've seen that in recent years where the NCAA is not, or at least they've tried to take the approach where the punishments aren't as punitive on the people that are there now compared mm-hmm. to who was there when they when they committed the quote unquote crimes. So I, I do think that as far as the, you know, the cheeseburger angle of the recruiting violations of, of having people on campus when they weren't supposed to be, I think this one is over. What what will happen from the sign stealing? There's still going to be more to come, but also I I expect the punishment for the sign stealing stuff to be very similar to what the punishment for this was where Jim Harbaugh and some coaches who are no longer there are going to get show causes and there might be like a slightly punitive like you know like five scholarships off or something i don't know and that'll come in 2027 right i mean four years from when it happened probably that's what this is right i mean wasn't this 2020 or 2021 yeah yeah years removed yeah pandemic recruiting restrictions uh sharon moore the head coach for michigan already served uh, a self-imposed suspension for these violations and his relationship with it um, you know, Michigan Athletic Director Ward Emanuel says no current staff members will face any game restrictions. You know, in the recruiting restrictions, there are, you know, some, you know, 
visit days and, and some things that you can get hit for here and there. Um, but it does seem uh, a little bit like you know Michigan is is plowing ahead, feeling like this part of the NCAA investigation is uh, is is behind them. But anything stand out about this to you? I've got one more piece on this that was a little interesting, but it's not totally related to this part of the investigation. I, I really haven't heard anybody talk about this. Like I got no text about this. I actually was like so focused on the transfer portal stuff that I didn't look at the top of the rundown today. I didn't read the stories about it. So I just, I try not to comment on stuff that I don't know a damn thing about. And I just, I think this is probably a nothing burger based on having like no, like nobody's talking about this. But yeah. you're an excellent sports media member. Sports media talks about things they know nothing about all the time. <laughs> but I, I like being right, man. Right. Like, like, like they, they don't, they don't have me on HQ to talk NBA. You know, I, I just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to waste the audience's time because I have not done any research on this topic. Yeah, it this kind of speak to like in the overall impact of this story is, you know, I I got home yesterday. I checked my emails and there's like a statement from Ward Manual in there, like a press release. I was like, what the hell is this even about? Like I had, you know, I I hadn't heard that this had even come down. Nobody, nobody from HQ texted me asking me if I want to go on and talk about it. None of that stuff. So this is just something that it's like. Okay, yeah, it, the world has completely moved on now that Harbaugh is no longer in Ann Arbor. Right, exactly. So again, I think the clarifications for our audience is, number one, this is not the sign stealing. We still have to do that in the future. Mm -hmm. We'll see what that leads to. This is the cheeseburger, and and we're moving beyond it. But Cheeseburgers the, in paradise. Um, uh, and by the way, uh, Dennis jumped on the uh, – he, he, he was carrying the flag for the 1 p.m. HQ hit. So he 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 ran so that we didn't have to. Perfect. <laughs> I was out in about the fourth hole yesterday. <laughs> Same. <laughs> that was great. Same. <laughs> but the but the Dodd father has some reporting tied to Michigan that came in late last night that is a little bit interesting. Uh, this from Dennis Dodd available on CBSSports.com. The NCAA threatened to suspend. Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh last fall, if his attorney did not halt satirical social media comments of the association's ongoing investigation into Wolverines football. Now, you'll remember Tom Mars was popping off on Twitter. We're talking cookie monster memes. We're talking like big block quotes uh, going out there, just going after the NCAA. So the NCAA sent a, quote, letter of admin if you're admonishing somebody's admonition, admonition. admonition yes, uh, to Tom Mars uh, from the uh, current NCAA Committee on Infraction Chair Dave Roberts saying that if Mars did not halt his post criticizing the NCAA's investigative process, the COI will consider appropriate penalties, including immediate suspension of your client. Guess what? Tom Mars kept posting and they did nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Like I, I, Danny, I, I don't, I'm, I love this story because it just brings to light. It's like, okay, so you, how, how, how much power do you have? Because it seems as though, and I'm not an expert in the bylaws. It seems as though this is definitely stepping outside of the due process and trying to, you know, come at somebody that you're investigating. And Tom Mars called their bluff. Totally. No one, no one respects them. It's got, I mean, it, and it's, I think it's been going on for a few years. It's just way more blatant now where it was like go ahead what are you gonna do it's incredible um so yeah no no suspension from the ncaa remember the suspension at the end of the season tied to the sign stealing scandal was actually a big 10 suspension so ncaa has yet to levy any penalties and despite the ncaa uh reported according to our own dennis dodd uh, threatening the lawyer to stop posting memes about how they can't do anything. Um, no, no, no immediate punishment. So one last, uh, Harbaugh note before yeah. we move on. Um, so we had the RV video and I saw an article that he's mixed up the locker room in LA with the chargers. He's doing it all numerical, try to separate guys, make sure the quarterbacks on together, like mix and match, mm -hmm. get defense offense together, build some camaraderie. You know what else he's done on their locker nameplates? Next to their names, they have how many stars they were coming out of high school, which I thought was pretty unique. Any guesses to how many five stars the Chargers have on their roster? Bosa, right, Derwin James. James. Um, who else? Is, is one of the Boses on the roster? No, yeah, yeah, but he wasn't. Apparently, he was a four-star because I thought he would have been a five-star too. And I went back and looked at 24-7, had him as a four-star. 
The one on the 49ers is, was there's a, an a offensive player. lineman that's kind of a under. There's only two. Herbert was like a three or four star. Oh, the, no, uh, DJ Fluker. It wasn't Fluker. Hold on. I'll look it up. Is there a Warmack? It was Derwin there? James. It was Derwin James for sure. It's not. I, I don't think it's Rashawn Slater, although I, I know we. No, we had Slater nice wasn't a five. Higher than everybody else. Uh, Slater, else? I think, was a four. There's an O lineman on the team. So uh, the short corner from FSU was not. Who? <laughs> this is a fun game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I should have had them ready to go. I don't, know, um, I don't know if guys on the Chargers. That's I don't I, I I thought Bosa was Khalil Mack obviously wasn't he was like right. a three star who ended up at Buffalo um yeah. he played like seven high school games mm -hmm. he was always hurt in high school like it was crazy so Joey was a four star Nick was a five star yes yeah the, whoever on the 49ers is, is is was the five star do you think Nick brings that up in conversation. Just no, somebody. they have so many things that they talk about, but I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> right, let's keep it going. <laughs> yeah. Um, who, are, who are the interior linemen on that team? Yeah, I, I just don't know the Chargers. So, how many? What do you? Just the one or two? Danny, it do was you just like two? Them? Two five yeah. stars is all they had on their roster, and I, I think that's think why he leaned that. into it to say, like, "Hey, we're a team made up of scrappy guys. They're going to work hard." Oh. Even though it's the NFL and they've got multiple, you know, hundred year or hundred million dollar contracts on there. Um, that's so. I guess Herbert was a four star. Yeah, it might have been a three star. Yeah, Herbert, I think was only a three or low four. Oh well, then then it's just it plays right into his hand. Yeah, if your star franchise quarterback is going to embody this, like we don't have five stars, Ed, you know, we just develop you into Super Bowl champions. Huh? Eckler or Eckler. Austin Eckler. He's yeah, not so there he, anymore. So he was like a like a zero or a two, I think. Um, Danny, do you like that? You, you, I mean, you know, all Harbaugh stick. You, it's going to be the other one. Buy in. Was it Denzel Perriman? No, Jamari no. Sawyer. Yeah, oh, Georgia was kid. a five star. Uh, okay, Georgia. that was the other he, one. Those were the two. The Derwin James. He's perceived serviceable. Okay, yeah. for him it was always. I think it was knees. Because like I can't. I would be. Tell you if, like Harbaugh, if Harbaugh hadn't already had success with the 49ers, I'd be a little bit worried about an Urban Meyer type situation, like playing and in, leaning into the college stuff. But because he's done it and adapted, I have less concerns. I think what he I also love has that... more guys who coach in the NFL who will mm -hmm. tell him, hey, Jim, th right. this, this, this part, like this thing you're doing, this ain't going to work, man. Like we are, we have more recently been in the NFL than you have. Like yep. this ain't going to go. What I love is one of the first moves he made roster wise was uh, getting Ben Mason out of retirement to bring him in as fullback, the uh, the two time low man trophy of the year winner of the year. So <laughs> he looked at that roster and said, We've got no five stars and no fullbacks. I know which one I need to fix first. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. One last thing before we hit a break and dive into the transfer portal. This is only this is mostly a payoff of a conversation that we had last week because during the master's mailbag, one of the questions from the uh, tailgate was, you know, okay, so what coaches, what active coaches would you want to play golf with? And we started running through, you know, all like what their golf game would be like, what their attitude would be like. And we mentioned on that show, the Chick-fil-A or peach bowl challenge, you know, as, as the game has changed over time, uh, you the, the title has changed, but for about 17 years, you know, as Bud was even able to pull up, you know, old, you know, like 2009, 2010 lineups, you know, it, it has continued to include many of the top uh, college football coaches. So we happen to receive just this week, the field, not the pairings, but the field for the 2024 peach bowl challenge. And so just for a little bit of fun, I want you to I want you to fill out who else you would want in your foursome. Okay, we've got the we've got the list available. I'll read it for the listeners. This is in alphabetical order: Shane Beamer, Manny Diaz, Dave Doran, Eli Drinkwitz, Randy Edsel, PJ Fleck, Hugh Freeze, Chan Gailey, Jim He's Grove, <laughs> uh, Paul Johnson. Who we discussed extensively. A lot of Georgia Tech connections there, Chip. Yeah, Brent Key, Dan Lanning. We talked about Lanning. Like, does Dan does Dan Lanning even play golf? Like, obviously enough to want to be involved in the challenge. Urban Meyer, Jeff Monken, 
Dan Mullen, Pat Narduzzi, Rick Neuheisel, shout out to our colleague, Mike Norvell, also Houston Nutt, Tom O'Brien, Kirby Smart, Steve Spurrier, and I I was stunned to see this one. And Tommy Tuberville. All right, how many uh, senior senator from Alabama. isn't he isn't he are supposed to be running the country? Hey, are, <laughs> are there 16 dudes here? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's like gotta be 16. Impromptu, impromptu, impromptu draft. Let's snake it. Okay. <laughs> now do we want to win or do we want to have fun? Let's see, that's this is my strategy. Yeah. All right. Who, who wants to go? Uh, random number generator real fast. Uh, <laughs> well, why don't we start with you and work counterclockwise to me? And then we'll start. All right, cool. With the first pick, Paul Johnson, no doubt, just turned 66. So he gets to move up to those nice, uh, you know, seniors tees. We're, guys, I mean, I could just go random for the rest of this. We, we, we got this in the back. because Paul Johnson can play. Okay, Danny. I'll go Dan Mullen. Retirement's been nice to him. He's had a lot more free time. He's out in the lake. He's wearing a wakeboard. But I also think he's on the golf course, and I think he'd be a lot of fun. I know he's on the golf course because I think it was him and Matt Berry, right? They were yeah, the they had the little yeah. bit every single <laughs> show. <laughs> oh, Mullen's got game. Yeah. Got enough. All right, uh, Tom. Uh, I'll go with Eli Drinkwitz, alpha nerd. Okay. Um. Uh, let's all right. So, uh, do I get a snake, or am I uh, am, am I gonna have to send it back? Yeah, you can get two. Uh, Take no, two. Yeah. Okay. Um, first pick, Steve Spurrier. Um, just, I mean, I mean, he's an Augusta member, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's go. Um, and then for my next pick, let's stay on the uh, on the experienced end of things. No, no, no. Change. Scratch that. We're going to go to an active coach. We've got one retired. We got to stay active. Somebody who we mentioned uh, probably has some game. We're going to go with Auburn coach Hugh Freeze. So at the turn, mm -hmm. I take Steve Spurrier and Hugh Freeze. All right, back to Tom. That'll, those will be interesting conversations. Um, give me, <laughs> give me Kirby. All right, Kirby got no chance of winning. My pick. Yes. Give me Rick Neuheisel. I almost slept on him. I was hoping he'd fall down to me because he's a stick. I mean, he's a member of Bel Air Country Club in L.A. Uh, yeah, he can play. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get Rick. All right. Uh, next, and I, I'm going Pat Narduzzi at Pitt. Whoa. Currently a three point five index. What? Are you hitting some up? Where are you no, this got list? Game. I up. Holy yeah. cow. That's not very <laughs> Pittsburgh of them. They're supposed no, to be hard nosed at, steel mill at, workers. Allegheny Country Club. I, I checked it. Patrick Narduzzi, and he only plays apparently in the offseason. Like all the rounds are between like February and August. So, like, it, you know. Uh, that's why that's enough. why he doesn't want his team scoring points because the games take longer and he wants to get the hell out and get back he on the course. <laughs> All right, uh, shoot, who else? Probably it, New Heisel was the other one. I, I if I went Johnson, New Heisel, Pat Narduzzi, this was have you looked up anybody else's? No. Uh, okay, okay, that was a really solid pull. I'm trying to, like, I have actually that played in tournaments and seen a couple of these guys swing. Um, give me Jim Grove, yeah, Go, going all, all old guys. Well, Narduzzi's not old, but all right, so man, so that means you're do we want to do keep playing it out, or do you want to say that's your that's your group? That it's Bud, Paul Johnson, Pat Narduzzi, and Jim Grove. That's only three guys. But you, no, but you that's plus a force them. We're going to force them. Yeah. But you're the fourth. Oh, yeah. Then that's my group. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Danny, round it out. Uh, I'll go Brent Key, Georgia Tech. I got like I got really good golfers. I need somebody that's out there shotgun and beers, like that's going to have some fun, bring some levity. If it's a little stressful, it comes down to the 18th hole. And he's an offensive lineman. I, I, he's bringing the – He's bringing the energy. Love it. Uh, give me Dan Lanning. Great energy play. It's, I have, I have, I have a, I have a, I have a plan here. Okay. I'll All right. Uh, and I will, uh, I'll, I'll also go with someone who I, I know just when it's, when it's time to, to sit back when we're not stressing about whether MJ Morris is going to be, you know, just like making himself ineligible. I mean, D Danny, you just hung out with them down at the regional. When it when it's time to just sit back and relax, Dave Doran understands yeah. how to do it. So, yeah. Dave, yeah. come on with your red solo cup and your cigar because uh, we're, we're going to add you to round out the group. So, I will add uh, to my to Steve Spurrier and Hugh Freeze. I will add NC State coach Dave Doran. Okay, to review, Bud's got Paul. It will be Bud Elliott, Paul Johnson, Pat Narduzzi, and Jim Grove. 
Danny, then the next group is Danny Cannell, Dan Mullen, Rick Neuheisel, and Brent Key. Tom Fernelli, joined by Eli Drinkwitz, Kirby Smart, and Dan Lanning. And Chip Patterson, joined by Steve Spurrier, Hugh Freeze, and Dave Doran. Tom's group is just talking ball all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all they're doing. But you they're know what it is? They're hundred, but they're talking ball. Dan and Kirby will be talking to each other all day because they've got a ton to talk about. Eli will be talking to them. I don't want to talk. <laughs> I just want to play <laughs> golf. So those three will be talking to themselves all day, and I can play because – I'm much better when I'm not talking and socializing. Like when I go with my friends, I'll shoot like a hundred. When I go by myself, I'll shoot 87 because I'm able to actually just think about what I'm doing. And that's kind of my goal here. I mean, you've got a chance to play 18 holes with phenomenal, phenomenal football coaches. And Tom says, don't talk to me. Are you, oh, how about this? Are That's you, why there was no way in hell I was going to draft PJ Fleck because, God, he would not shut up the entire four hours you were out there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would say that, like, PJ Fleck, Urban Meyer, Tommy Tuberville, uh, who else is on my do not draft list? <laughs> um, you don't want to get the world problem solved? I, I, I don't think it can happen over 18 holes. <laughs> not with me. Nobody picked up TOB. Could probably get. Nope, nobody picked up TOB. TOB would be a good one. I could probably get Tuberville to try to pass legislation for me. <laughs> Did anybody pick Shane Beamer? Nope. Nope. He'd, I think son of a guy who played a lot of golf. I bet he's got good game. I think yeah. he'd be fun. His he picture, fun. there's a picture like I, I saw of him. The pose looks great. At the end, like he looks like he's watching it down the fairway, not like Ooh. like you know flailing. Mm -hmm. Where's the ball? Like he yeah. looks good. Uh, set seven three index at uh, Kiowa and uh, Kiote. Ooh. Pretty impressive. Those are nice clubs, yeah, dude. we might have missed out on that one. Yeah, that that he, he might. Be I'm just pissed because this used to be coaches and players, right? <laughs> like former coaches, and that's the thing. So it's going to be a two man scramble for a three hundred thousand dollar purse. Each of these coaches, twenty three of them, have. Um, oh, wait, it's a scramble. It's a two man scramble. So they're going to announce the pairings in a oh, little bit. I would have picked the coaches I believe would be willing to cheat the most, so we could win. <laughs> This Stableford scoring eight, it's Stableford scoring system, so it kind of like you know flattens out the handicap situation. Team that wins the scrambles always shot like a 48 somehow. It's like, huh, I don't I don't know if that's their real score. Yeah, there's there's that one video of those guys coming in at like 27 under. Yeah. Mm, okay. You're talking about yeah, the the yeah. yeah. Oh, well, in that case, PJ Fleck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up on the other side. Transfer portal's already been buzzing. We've got a couple big picture and definitely some uh, names to know. Uh, point you in the right direction as we continue on with this spring portal window. Next. The NWSL returns April 20th to CBS. Back here on the Cover 3 podcast. We are on day two, so let's jump on into the portal. All right. Um, at, at the risk of being a little too scattered here, I just want to make sure that we... Um, we get to one piece of this first. So, um, Danny, your online relationship is only with, uh, junior, right? It's not with Shiloh. Oh. No. Yeah. Okay, yeah. My right. relationship. Thanks for qual quantifying it that way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, because the, so you're supposed to DM Shiloh. If you are a defensive player who would like to jump into the portal and who is in the portal and wants to join Colorado, if you are an offensive player, you're supposed to contact Shador. Uh, there is a full Colorado coaching staff. There is a head coach who claims by his own word, he's not hard to find, but as we've got some, uh, some pretty massive exits, the, uh, the message from Shiloh Sanders saying DM tra defense transfers, DM me offense transfers, DM Shador Sanders with the addition of this, <laughs> not last chance. You uh, day one headlines. And then look, we're going to get to Cormani McLean. We're going to get to Savion. Is Washington. that a shot at Cormani? What is the, is this, this is not last chance. You thing a shot at Cormani. 
Possibly. After DM after DM kind of called him called him out about you know class and responsibilities and stuff, like going to class, not having class, but like that's I mean it, it could have been that's great context, know. you know. So, um, what what's Colorado going to do? <laughs> I'd love to be in those DMs. I'd love to see what's coming in. You know? uh, so, uh, 24 seven sports, Carl Reed, uh, dropped a line yesterday. I believe during their show, he said, I expect Colorado to be very active with the offensive linemen in this portal window. And when you, got- yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, they, they, <laughs> lost, they lost Savion Washington yesterday, who is not a great player, but it's certainly, it's um, their last starter. He started nine games for him. And now we've yeah. got zero returning starts from last year. They have 108 active starts because of other players that they've brought in in terms of what they've done at previous schools. But then even you trace back like where those were and what level that was at, uh, even for those 108 active starts that you have on the offensive line on this Colorado roster, the big 12 is going to be a step up in competition for many of them. Uh, can, we, can we talk about the most important part of this? Bud, you hurt my feelings last night. I did. <sighs> yeah. 7 19 p.m i send a tweet to the group thread from some colorado account with a screenshot of the of the the dm story on instagram with the, well, i just say lol 7 21 p.m but elliot tweets that same screenshot with interesting strategy following today's liquidation of last year's louis you took it from the group text but you didn't acknowledge the text you just went straight to twitter with it <laughs> am i not good enough for a response I, you, you, did you not appreciate my alliteration liquidation of last year's Louis? <laughs> Don't change the subject. You hurt my feelings, bud. Hey, you didn't Ellie, even give me a thumbs up or anything. You up, just double tap crap out. And <laughs> not nice. <laughs> oh, this is not surprising, though. No. I mean, you said a uh, chip to start this off. I mean, Dion did this a year ago. He was like, yo, if you want to come, hit me up. Like, I mean, he called it out. It's not surprising at all that they're doing this. I actually think it's probably a good idea. Like, why wouldn't you throw it out there? Because I think there's a lot of players that don't want to enter the portal that can just DM them, say, "Hey, what, what's you, what you got? You know, can what are you thinking? You know, what what can we do?" Yeah, I mean, it's going on anyway. Like, right. this is happening all the time. It's just they're actually posting it on their Instagram story. Like, I just wonder who's sifting through for them. Because I'm, I'm serious. Like, imagine how many players that aren't good are like, "Yeah, I'll come. Let's go." Where are we I going? Just, I just want to imagine like Dion, Shiloh, and Shadur all sitting in a room watching tape on all these guys who sent DMs. <laughs> like, all right, boys, we're gonna figure out which ones we want. I mean, is I, it, I, it, I that is the like unfair assumption that I have right now is that the brain trust of Colorado football is Dion and his two sons on the team, and that they are running a Big Twelve program right now. Yeah, um, I think this is one of the problems with the strategy of going portal only is that it is very hard to get players who are good enough to play for you who want to come and be backups in the portal. Most of the guys in the portal are going to want to go somewhere and start unless you have a lot of NIL money. And Colorado does not have enough NIL money to entice good players to be backups for them. Now, I'm a guy that thinks Dion's only at Colorado for two seasons. So I am totally not one of these, what they're doing doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense if you frame it as he's only intending to be there for as long as his sons are going to be there. What he hasn't said, that's just the way they are operating makes the most sense if you frame it from that lens. If you're, There's no long-term plan there that he has articulated, and the actions don't suggest any sort of long-term plan. But it'll be interesting to see. Like, Savion Washington is a very nice backup in the Big 12. Like, that's a kind of a nice guy to have, and now he's gone. So we'll see what they can get. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, can can we do the Cormani thing and then like pivot out yeah, of this? Because I, I don't, sure. don't want to just sit here for ten minutes and just like you know throw throw dirt here. It's just when we're when we're sitting here and we're gathering all the pieces and and twenty four seven sports has done such a good job of being able to compile a lot of this information. Uh, you know, <laughs> I mean. Chris Hummer and, and Matt Zenis are just literal robots right now, just like plugged into the portal with like great insight, um, including, and we'll get to some of this in a little bit, you know, understanding where some of these guys might go. But the Cormani McLean was one of the biggest splash signees 
for Colorado heading into Deion Sanders' first season. You know, somebody who had backed off of commitments to Miami and Florida during the winter cycle, pushed his commitment to February, commits to Colorado in January. But then, you know, as Bud mentioned earlier, did not get great comments from Deion Sanders when reporters would ask, like, okay, so like, you know, Travis Hunter's hurt. So like, are, are we going to see Cormani McLean? And for the most part, we did not see a lot of Cormani McLean. So now that Cormani McLean, if, if he's going to seek, uh, if he's going to seek a home elsewhere, he carries with him that blue chip projection coming out of high school. How, how, how do we reevaluate him now? Because if he wasn't going to be a part of the program anyway, for other reasons, then maybe not as much of a loss and maybe not the same kind of star power at wherever he commits to next. Yeah, I don't really want to put this all on Dion. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I think everybody expects me to be like the Dion hater because I thought what they were doing last year was smoke and mirrors. And, you know, they went one and eight, which was the same record they had in 2022. But I, honestly, there were questions about Cormani's maturity beyond the questions we would have about the maturity of a normal 18 or he might be a 19 year old coming out of high school. And it seems like those, those kind of came home to roost at Colorado. You know, when Dion's calling you out for, not handling your business, not going to class, all, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, that's that's going to be a requirement pretty much anywhere. Like you do at least have to, to do the bare minimum. However, Cormani is still crazy talented, has not had any kind of injury that would, uh, you know, hurt his talent. We've had guys be high NFL draft picks who literally had to sit out two seasons of college football because they were addicted to crack. Okay. So there's nothing that says that like that, that Cormani can't get his stuff together start going to class, get a little wake-up call at wherever he goes next, right, and and be the guy. He just probably needs to have a little more humility with it and just sort of start to work as more of a college football player needs to work, whereas in high school he got he got by just on being a ridiculous talent. And there certainly were some, like, warning signs, okay? Everybody got good laughs about all of Miami's staff uh, showing up to, to his high school and then him pulling the okey-doke and not being there and, like, not telling him, you know, so uh, like that's funny, but there also is a little. It's also a red flag, flag. like mm -hmm. yes, yeah. right, exactly. So, um, yeah, man, I, I, I have high hopes for him long term as long as he just kind of gets the mindset right. But you know, there are a lot of guys that went in the portal yesterday who I was like, okay, I know multiple staffs have passed on this kid, not Cormani. Like Cormani's a guy whose ability is so nuts, you kind of just have to keep going after him. But like, there are guys who were in that four star range, including some from his area. I, I knew good staffs, but like. I don't want that kid in my locker room. Like that's just not the kind of habits I want to bring into this program. And now they're in the portal. Yeah, there's there's nothing wrong with Dion holding a player accountable. You know? No. <laughs> so yeah. it what will be interesting is to see where he ends up because, like Bud, you mentioned there were questions about the maturity issues before he got to Colorado. Dion calling him out publicly is only going to make that more of a public information. So it will be interesting to see what schools are willing to take a chance on him, or if none of the top kind of, you know, the kind of programs you would expect to want a talent like Cormani McLean, if they don't go after him, I think that'll be very telling to see where he ends up. I think this is where there's a disconnect with Dion's, you know, brand and image versus the reality of what he is. And I think this is what haters, and I don't, I don't think Bud and I, are, I think we've been probably, you know, positioned as the biggest haters, at least on social media. And I think the most we're just trying to, by the way. Right. But, like, but I think like we're trying to get the reality of the situation. Like I think the hype, when you see so much hype and there's not much substance, I think that's what bothers us. But as far as Dion, the football coach, I think the perception of him from the outside is he's all about flash, you know, paying players. Let's go through the portal. But on a day to day basis, I think he's an old school football coach. I think he coaches him hard. I think he has good messaging for him. I think he wants to hold him accountable. Like Tom said, and I think maybe that was a shock to Cormani McLean. I think maybe he thought, oh, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to, you know, we're going to be splashy and we're going to be able to talk trash and we're going to have everybody, you know, we're going to get paid and it's just going to be easy. And I think Dion does try to, you know, coach him hard. And I think that's why it didn't work. I mean, we, speaking of the red flags were early when he wasn't starting, when Dion calls him out to the media and says he's got to go to class, he's got to study the playbook, he's got to get in shape, like, those were the red flags that said, uh-oh, this is a young player who doesn't get it. And like, like Bud said, I don't know if he ever does get it. Like, this could be a wake-up call, but it depends on what other team lets him in. And what, you know, do they continue to hold him accountable or do they let him walk all over him? The one thing I, I will question, because I don't know, but it, it does make me wonder, 
is when you are so transfer portal heavy and the team is so old, do you have the right processes in place to help young players who are straight out of high school acclimate to your program? Because everybody who's already played college football somewhere else understands like the bare minimum you got to do. Because if you're eligible, you probably were doing the bare minimum and you have to be eligible to transfer. So I don't know, like a lot of these freshmen, they need their hands held. Some of these guys come to campus. Like, I know guys that run like, uh, you know, campus life, professional development, uh, you know, life development for, for a lot of these big power five programs. These kids come to campus like without an ID, right? Like they, they uh, just basic stuff that I think people from a lot of backgrounds have. And they don't have them. like there's a lot of like life stuff that you really need some handholding for certain kids when they get on campus. And I don't know if Colorado has that set up because your transfers, they have that kind of stuff. Like they've been lived as an adult for at least a year or two in almost all cases. Uh, Danny, I'm glad you provided that context because I, I was just thinking there was a question in the tailgate. You know, what doesn't Dion style attract that kind of personality? And I was thinking that Dion style is being molded by Bobby Bowden, and Mickey Andrews, right? You know, right. like that's a, that, that is a hard line. Like this is it. Like this is the standard. This is the way you practice. This is the way you take care of your business. And that that's what I've sensed in terms of him as a coach. And I'm, I'm glad you're able to identify that because the, it, it's not going to be the, the same thing as the social media presence when you show up in practice, I would right. think for DMs. I mean, there was a, there was a quote from an assistant coach earlier that said, Cormani had just started practicing and he said he'll get more reps once he gets in shape. This was spring practice. Just a few, like I just saw this quote a week ago. I'm like, you're supposed to be in the best shape of the season. And like, cause you've already gone through winter workouts. Like you don't come in spring football to get in shape. Like it was weird. Well, so I mean, but some freshmen do like even highly rated ones do like I, Hakeem Williams last year really struggled with workouts when he first got to FSU mm -hmm. by Halloween. When Johnny Wilson and Keon Coleman got hurt, he's making like important catches for them it, when, when they're trailing against Duke on third down. So, but like again, certain programs have their like high school acclimation mm -hmm. stuff figured out, and Colorado takes almost no high school players. So I don't know what their high school acclimation program looks like. Maybe mm -hmm. it's awesome. Also, in the Midwest, we totally use the spring to get back in shape because we don't do crap <laughs> over the winter, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, uh, coming up on the other side, uh, expanding the picture a little bit, there is a defensive lineman who you're going to hear a lot about. So let's let's dig into exactly what CJ West might be able to offer uh, your favorite power conference program. Also, some troubling comments from some pit players who have entered the portal, and much more from the early portal buzz next. There are some things in life that you can't quite explain. An extraordinary story. Maybe it sounds flawless, looks effortless, or makes you feel like a part of history. The first ever goal for BFC. And when all of those phenomenons come together, it's perfect. Pitch perfect. Back here on the Cover 3 podcast, um, uh, the Pitt defense is losing some really, really key players right now. Uh, we've got linebacker uh, Solomon DeShields is jumping into the transfer portal. Uh, we also saw, uh, let's see, Hayes jump into the portal. Uh, Day yeah, Dayon Hayes jumped in the portal. Christian, hey, I got the pronunciation. You ready for it? Vea. No. Veyer, yeah. That's it looks like Velu. That is not the French I don't know. But it's Veyer. But anyway, uh pit quarterback Christian Veyer, defensive end Dayon Hayes, and linebacker Solomon DeShields uh, all entering the transfer portal. Uh, Bud, what's your let's, let's start with the defensive side there. What's your read on the you know what you could see? Um, from those defensive players in terms of the, the kind of places that would be interested in them or what kind of players or prospects they are for the portal? So very few teams last, yesterday lost a player who they like legitimately did not want to lose. I, I texted a bunch of coaches last night, and I got a lot of, like, fingers crossed, we haven't lost anybody that actually hurts us yet. Mm. You know, haven't lost anybody we can't replace. 
know, our collective was on its game. Like, like we, we got all our top guys locked up, which is great news, I think, for the sport. Like, I don't actually think it's good for, like, everybody to constantly portal. Like, I do think player movement and freedom, when you're not going to put them on contracts, should be a right you have. But it doesn't mean I think it's actually good for the mm-hmm. long-term health of the sport. So, from that standpoint, it's good. However, with Pitt, um, they let Oaken Lola walk in the portal. He was their other pass rusher in the December window, and they elected to pay Hayes and, I believe, re-up him as well from the reports I read yesterday. And he still bounced. Now, you can sour grapes this thing and be like, oh, he wasn't that important. But to me, like, if you prioritize him over the other DN you let walk and you re-up him twice, your actions speak louder than your words. So I do think that's a pretty big loss for Pitt. Uh, he made some comments to – it wasn't the Post-Gazette. I, I don't it know. was. I got him here. You want him? Was it? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, he messaged him. Um, uh, I think this is adding insult to injury. Uh, he's messaged the po- Post Gazette. It's just that I don't believe we can win now. I believe we were going to win games, but I le- I believe we are in a developmental stage, and I just can't do that right now. And then he later, there was a source close to him who said it's about the confidence in the offense. He doesn't have it. Which, again, if you watched Pitt's offense last year, understandable understandable if you watch Pitt's offense this spring which i have not done yet tbd they did hire uh, a new offensive staff and they brought in some new quarterbacks so we'll have to see uh, they also lost their linebacker to shields who i thought was a pretty good player um they have a better linebacker depth at Pitt than they oh did i just lose y'all yeah you lost us for a second good. weird uh do you have me now yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. all right so Pitt, I think, was a good player for them. I think they can probably replace uh, DeShields, the linebacker, uh, as opposed to Hayes. I, I don't know. That, yeah, that seems like a real loss. Hayes played against the offense all spring, came out and said, we're not going to win football games with this <laughs> offense. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, oh. I, yeah. It's, I, I do think you're going to see, too, Pits in the ACC. And I do think like if any schools are going to get kind of crushed in the portal, it's typically going to be the non-SEC and non-Big Ten schools because I do think that those two leagues right now kind of have, you know, they've got the money and they've got, you know, more more of their schools have things in place to help retain. But I also think what you were saying, but as far as like the first day really just being guys who most coaches aren't that devastated to see because they've been the guys who are maybe being tried at a new position this spring, you know, as kind of a, a nudge to let them know where they stand on the depth chart as coaches are trying to get under limits to bring new guys in. It will be interesting to see you because there's the portal still open for what another two weeks, pretty much until the yeah. 30th. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what starts happening as roster spots become available on teams that might not be there just yet. A few other notes I would add on this, just kind of meta stuff. One, you have 48 hours to actually put the player into the portal after he requests. Now, in most cases, we're going to know about that from yeah. the school. Like we have sources who will tell us. Like there's not a, but some schools will keep it quiet for the 48, try to convince the kid to turn it around. And you can, there's sort of a cooling off, withdrawing process before it goes in. So you can hold it for 48 if you want. So I'm sure there are some schools who have paperwork from guys already that we don't know about that will pop on Thursday. Uh, but probably not that many. What I don't buy into is that there are these superstar players who are going to play out their spring practice and play in the spring game and then go in, unless there's one more check they have to collect. So I think for certain collectives, like how they might have structured this, you know, they don't want to transfer until they get that final check from the collective. So I do think we'll see some more big names jump in. I, I, was, I was asking Josh Pate yesterday, I was like, bro, can we – can we get this craziness like kickstarted? I'd like, like to have some content for Wednesday. I mean, thankfully we had the golfer draft, uh, but <laughs> you know, it, it, it was, it was really, uh, it was pretty quiet. Um, it's paint golf. I don't think so. I it's crap out of a softball. I bet he would hit bombs though. Yeah. Have you seen him hit a softball? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Have, have you seen the, the competition he's playing? Or like, like, look, the swing is legit and he hits the ball a million miles at, we got to get him like like playing like some at least b ball like that. I don't I don't know on some, some of these. I like co-ed league. What's going no, on? No, but uh, <laughs> like we down in Florida, we don't allow fat shortstops, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see him with the driver. I want to see what he can do. <laughs> I bet you can hit it pretty good. That's what I'm saying. 
Oh, I mean, it'll go and a mile. Down there in South Florida now that we're, we're uh, remodeling the Nashville studio. So I don't, I don't, I don't know which way it'll go. I'm sure he can hit it a mile. I mean, I've, I've seen get, the, get some Rory McIlroy action out of Pate there. Just <laughs> uh, all right. So one of the names that I think a lot of people will want to know is Kent State defensive tackle C.J. West, and that is because as we talked about heading into this cycle defensive tackle defensive line in general are places where um, there's just going to be a lot of big time power conference programs that are, are looking uh, to go and find some depth. If not some, some players who could even compete for starters. He was, um, you know, a, a productive player for Kent state over the, the last couple of years. He's totaled more than hundred tackles, more than 19 and a half tackles for loss and seven sacks across three seasons, an all-conference pick last year. He already reportedly as a smattering of uh, of power conference offers ever since entering the portal. But did you do you have a, a real feel of what the other schools think of West? I mean, are you get is that a depth piece or is that somebody who who comes in and starts? I think it was good for him to go in early for his market value. Um, I think he could start at some schools, but probably I, I don't think he's a starter at like a top 10 program, but maybe in that somewhere like 15 to 35 range. Uh, I've got a list of schools. Do you want to hear them? Please. Okay. Reportedly uh, I'm pulling this from a uh, friend, Max Olson over at the athletic. He's got the list of schools that have already expressed interest in CJ West as LSU, Indiana, Rutgers, Miami, Kansas state, Colorado, Wisconsin, Arkansas, and Texas A&M. So that'd be, Start at the majority of them, I think. You know who? Uh, you know who he played high school football with? Who? Uh, no. JJ McCarthy. They might not have been on varsity at the same time, but they both went to Nazareth in Lagrange Park. So he must be a great leader, great winner. Yeah. I, mean, you know, I know he's been playing for Kent State, but I I see a winner. I see somebody who's got it. I IMG could have used it that, that year that uh, <laughs> JJ that came down. <laughs> Wait, was he? A, he would have been a kid that uh, that didn't get to play his COVID year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a 2020 right? class. Yeah, so he was yeah. at Naz, but yeah. Wait, well, the 2020 class, their senior year was 19. So he, but same school as JJ. Okay, so he was mm -hmm. on the team, and then JJ left for IMG when they Correct. were going to play. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm guessing he was. I don't know if he was varsity at that point, but I'm guessing he was based on the fact that he was, you know, six two, three hundred pounds in high school. Um. I mean, this is a position of need. I'm, I'm the list. I'm sure might even be bigger than that as people are going to come calling. I do think what we're going to see is these type of schools become in you know, developmental programs, and then you're going to go pluck the best guys. I mean, Braden Fisk is a good example. Western Michigan yeah. comes in. I mean, you'd love if you could get that type of production out of CJ West, but you know, it's where scouting comes in, projecting, seeing where they are. Like those departments are becoming so much more valuable in every program to be able to see and pick and choose and say all right who's a good fit who can we go get it's gonna be interesting to see we we hear a lot about the uh you know coaches say like oh, what why even why it's why is it even worth it? i'm just gonna lose my player but kent state got an all-conference season out of this guy mm -hmm. last year like that's not nothing um, you're, you're not getting plucked off kent state until you have at least one good year of, of dominance because teams don't like guys from the mac unless they just destroy the mac right um Tip. Yes. No. Oh, okay. Just there was I was I was going to divert into a different topic, but we can go. I mean, uh, aside from the transfer portal, or just yeah, my dumb brain, dumb dumb brain thoughts. All right, Union Mitchell, you know the Toledo corner. Everybody loves him. N who was the last good corner from the MAC? Go ahead, name one. <laughs> This is my big dumb brain because I watch Quinion Mitchell. And I'm like, oh, this kid's I get it. Like he's tall, he's long, he's he's good in coverage, he's fluid, he's a good athlete, all this stuff, but he's not covering anybody in the Mac. Yeah, because there are no receivers in the Mac. And then it's like I'm looking, I just looked up the draft history of Mac Corners, and it's like it is bleak. So, and this is the guy who's like projected as a first rounder. Just yeah, big dumb brain thoughts. I don't <laughs> I don't hate it. Like, hey, congratulations. You you had everyone locked up and no one could get open, but the difference that you're going to see from then to, I mean, there, there ain't no, uh, who's the Corey from Western Michigan? Corey Davis. Corey Davis. Yeah. We didn't have any Corey Davises in the Mac this year. I don't think so. Um, but no, we'll, the, well uh, Gage, Lovadrian, however yeah. you say it, the, the Miami, Ohio kid who's not South Carolina. Yep. 
was probably your best receiver in the MAC, right? Juwan Newton at Toledo was pretty good, yeah, but he's small. Uh, yeah, there wasn't like anybody. My, I liked Miles Cross. I can't remember where he had, he transferred to. Uh, I can't remember. He came out in the portal. I was like, "Ooh, that's a good player." I can't remember where he ended up, but I liked Miles Cross at Ohio. Jones um, at Ohio, at Ohio, who's transferring out, is like a decent player, but he's not much of an approximation of what you'd see in the NFL. In the NFL, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. All right, quick before we uh, we get out of here, I want wanted to ask: Do you think that this player uh, can help a team, and if so, what level do you think that they could help? And let's start with former Miami quarterback Jacurry Brown. I think he could help a power four or a, a G five team. Do you think okay. he could be a depth piece for a power conference team? Is he interested in that? I mean, like Miami had him running QB four behind Emory Williams and Reese Poppenberger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like prominent Miami booster sent me a video of a throw at Curry made in practice this spring. That wasn't very nice. So you know, also, they, don't, they don't seem too disappointed. Yeah. Also uh, texting that. I don't know if this happens to y'all or if we even mentioned to Curry, but his, his name keeps pronouncing to jacuzzi. Or auto correcting. <laughs> so, congratulations, Jacuzzi Brown. I hope you land somewhere where I can. I can uh, you know, you know, you get <laughs> last. You know, you don't want to see too much Brown in the Jacuzzi, though. That means somebody. Else. <laughs> Could he be somebody they build an offense around that's a little bit more run heavy? Yeah, like I think that's, that's why I like, think certain G five programs there. he could probably go to. Or you know, honestly, not. I don't. Jacuzzi Brown seems like a Hugh Freeze quarterback maybe at auburn or a gus smells i'm sorry not Hugh freeze like a gus quarterback like i could see gus doesn't yeah. really need one right now but i could see him ending up at ucf he's from the state yeah all right so timmy mclean entered the portal right yeah he was at usf he transferred to ucf can timmy mclean help somebody I think he'll have a landing spot. I mean, he he did do some nice things against Kansas State when um, Plumley got hurt. I'm trying to remember what other games I watched him in last year. He's just tiny, right? Like, I think like a Sun Belt. You yeah, know what I mean, like the kid JMU had success with last year. Yeah. He ain't real big. No, so like he could end up at a Sun Belt school and probably have a decent run for somebody. Yeah. Uh, former North Carolina and Arkansas quarterback Jacoby Criswell, he enters the portal. You know, we enter the tail end green era for Arkansas. Uh, what about Criswell? You think uh, you think the former North Carolina and Arkansas quarterback, one time four star prospect, has a landing spot somewhere? A landing spot, yes. How effective he'll be, I don't know because it's like you can only go based on what's happened. He was at North Carolina, couldn't get the starting job. He was at Arkansas, couldn't get the starting job, and they brought in Taylor Green, which kind of gives you a sense of how that coaching staff felt about Criswell. So I don't know. Chad brings up an interesting question. Like, shouldn't Iowa take a flyer on one of these guys just in case McNamara doesn't get back healthy? Like, I don't think McNamara is actually any good, but like he is better than the, the uh fat Joe. Figure. Yeah. <laughs> if you're Iowa, like, are you really comfortable? with deacon hill um i i think yeah i don't know i don't know all these guys don't they feel like journeyman qbs like i mean we're yeah. starting to see that now i mean we see yeah. them in the nfl and you like i think the best case scenario for some of these guys is like tj finley who finally found a, found a home at texas state and played pretty well mm -hmm. like you just figure out your sweet spot and maybe you were a little bit overhyped or you had a tough situation confidence was rattled wrong system whatever it was then eventually, I think that's a best case scenario for some. The other ones are like, what if you're JT Daniels and you go four or five different schools and end up at work. Rice? Yeah. Right. It, it does matter at the quarterback position who blocks your, your path to playing time. Like in the case of Jacoby Criswell, it was literally Drake May and then Taylor Green, who was one of the best transfer guys out there who's going to start for Arkansas. Uh, with Jacoby, I think it's a little bit lesser quality of player with Van Dyke and uh, Cam Ward. But Jacurry was also a pretty known project. Like, even people who liked him, and I was not a huge fan of his out of high school compared to some, 
even the folks who really liked him would acknowledge he was a major developmental prospect, like very raw as a thrower. Uh, could you know scramble decently, and I mean, uh, like pick a spot where you're going to play, and like like the staff actually believes in you. Well, I was going to say, do you now that McLean is gone, do you back up KJ? Is there a spot for you uh, in that quarterback room with Gus? I think they like the kid they just signed though at UCF, so you got to be got to be careful how you handle the room. Yeah, but possibly. I mean, I, I could see it. Um, speaking of who was in front of you, Christian Veyer had Nate Yarnell. Yeah, that's a hard no. Um, <laughs> if you're behind Holstein and Yarnell and uh, there's another guy. He was running fourth, I think, again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not not great. And then uh, Nick Evers from Wisconsin into the portal. Another situation where it's a guy who keeps getting recruited over. I never saw it with him as, as a high school recruit. We just we keep we we start this cycle talking about these teams and be like, oh, and they they could jump in for a quarterback. And I just I thought that this would be an illuminating, you know, exercise to be like, really, really, Michigan with all the goals right. that Michigan has is gonna jump in for one of these guys. I think those deals, if they happen, those are brokered already done. Mm-hmm. Portal announcement, you know, that oh, like do not was it do not contact. Yeah, yeah do not contact. Yeah. I mean, these. This is a list of Jag. <laughs> if this is it, not Jags, Jag. <laughs> Just a journeyman. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, if this is close to all we get, to Michigan yeah. State, UCLA, Minnesota, a lot of these sort of like second tier Big Ten programs where players' agents are pretty actively shopping them, like, oh, I don't think this collective is going to step up. Mm-hmm. It, it, if we don't get movement, that largely means the collective stepped up. Nicely nicely done. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that as a pre-show. That was, yeah, that's I, some of the hot rumors. Like, some of these guys' agents who have not gone in the portal yet, I'm watching them. They're like, oh, I, don't, I don't think this collective is going to come correct, and maybe some of them are going to step up and do so. Less, the, the fact that there's not more movement I, and I love this, but I really love this take. The fact that there's not some huge, you know, haymaker, complete chaos in this window. And again, we are one day into it. Who knows? But um, it's a good sign for the health beyond 20 programs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that- we don't need a million kids in the portal every year. Like, Right. Yeah. Also, it's just, let's be honest, it's a pain in the ass. Like, that's, <laughs> like, think about it, like, you know, if you're an NFL, if you're covering the NFL, this has nothing to do with, you know, being just, you know, for the players, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm happy they can transfer, yada, yada, yada. They get paid. Good for them. But just as somebody who covers a sport, like if you cover the NFL, it's difficult to keep track of all the roster movement of 32 teams. Try doing it for 133. So it's like they only have 53 man rosters, too. That's what I'm saying. So it's yeah, like it is, numbers are way easier <laughs> covering the sport when there's all that movement. It's just like, bro, chill out. And like the one thing I will that annoys me is what's the name of the offensive lineman at USC who just got there this spring as part of their class and is already in the portal? I know we can't have rules right now because the courts will sue them, but can we just get a rule where if you enroll, you have to stay for at least a year before you could transfer? Zandamella. Is it just as it seems right there, bud? The interior offensive lineman, he committed to USC. Mm -hmm. One of the top players in the class, yeah. The top-rated player in the class. And uh, this is his his second shout-out of the week, I think. According to Big Will Backus, um, this will be the first time that Lincoln Riley, as a head coach, has entered without a top 50 freshman on his roster. That at Oklahoma and at USC, he has always had at least one top 50 freshmen on the roster and now with his top rated player an interior offensive lineman four-star prospect with him hitting the portal if he does end up choosing to go elsewhere uh yeah don't love don't love the uh the tea leaves around usc uh around usc if that's going to be the case but we'll see um we got. We'll keep doing a little bit more portal stuff uh, on in tomorrow. I've got uh, got my eyes on Marcus Bryant, Peyton Kirkland, Elijah Herring, you know Kelly from Miami. You know so, some other pieces that we're going to be moving, pieces that we're going to be tracking. Also, this coming up Saturday, 
pretty loaded. So we will be doing our spring game, what to watch, the latest from the transfer portal. And of course, as always, Thursdays in the offseason, a time to get interactive. We will be taking questions live from the Cover 3 tailgate and from the big old bag of mail, where if you leave us a five-star review and in that review, put your mailbag question. We'll tackle it in a future mailbag episode. Join us 11 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. See ya. See ya.